Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Twin Tiers EPC on this fine Sunday morning. We do have a few announcements this morning. Uh, I'll be spending a little time back here uh, since uh, we're a little short-handed. So I'll be up for the the prayer time and the the message, but the rest of the time I'll be back here. So if you don't see me up here and you just hear my voice, that's why. I'll try not to tell you to build a boat. <laughs> uh, just a reminder, the counter and entranceway uh, has uh, postcards and things uh, if you want to send out. Also, Voice of the Martyr magazines. Uh, we do have the new December, January, February devotions on the back table. Uh, if you haven't uh, picked one up yet, make sure you get one. And give one away. Uh, there is the um, winter newsletter on the back table as well. And we have a sign-up sheet for a scripture reader. Uh, thank you, Noel, for signing up for today. We do need a scripture reader for next Sunday. Uh, if you don't sign up, I'll have to pick someone. So good luck with that. We have the, the luncheon today, so uh, please stay if you're able. We have the Hanging of the Greens, Saturday, December 2nd at 10 a.m. There will be hot chocolate and donuts and maybe some gluten-free goodies. We have Butch's Bible Study on Tuesday, Men and Women's Bible Study on Thursday. Uh, for the time being, we'll continue to collect uh, ramen noodles for the Big Flats Food Pantry. And we are um, scheduled to do bell ringing uh, for a four-hour shift on a, a Monday in December. Uh, Joe's not here, so I don't have the uh, exact uh, date or time. But if you're free on a Monday afternoon uh, or early evening, probably, then um, keep that in mind. Are there any other announcements? And with that, let's quiet our hearts and minds as we prepare to worship our Lord.
Today's call to worship is Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The, Lord's works righteous, the Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower in the field. The wind blows over it, and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him, and his righteousness with their children's children with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey its precepts, the Lord has established his throne in heaven and the kingdom rules over them. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly host, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works, everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Amen. The worship team. Let's stand. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea, creation's revealing your majesty. From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring, every creature unique in the song that it sings. stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing God. All powerful, untamable, awestruck we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. You are amazing God. Who has told every lightning bolt where it should go? Or seen heavenly storehouses laden with snow? Who imagined the sun and gives source to its light? Yet conceals it to bring us the coolness of night. None can fathom, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing God. All-powerful, untamable, 
awestruck we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim you are amazing God indescribable uncontainable you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name you are amazing God incomparable unchangeable you see the depths of my heart and you love me the same you are amazing God you are amazing
All right, for those that don't know, Danny tested positive for COVID on Thursday. One of the reasons why I'm kind of hanging out, not shaking hands or, you know, probably won't stay for the lunch, you know, but rather keep everyone safe. Uh, Heather stayed home also for the same reason, but I needed to be here regardless. So. Yeah, so it's good. Um, but we do have a, a lot of people traveling, a lot of people out this week. Um, so pray for uh, Stu and Harriet. Uh, pray for the Burleys. Pray for the Dabrowskis. Pray for the Sterlings. Uh, pray for, let's see, the Hansons and uh, who else? the Silvernails. And uh, who else am I missing? The Canfields. Yes, thank you. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, so pray for safety for Dave that he doesn't hit his thumb with the hammer, you know, and doesn't burn the place down with his uh, blacksmithing. Uh, and pray for continued healing for Pat. Continued healing for Marlon. Uh, continued healing for Becky. Uh, I'm sure she's still sore. Uh, and, uh, yeah. So I don't, I'm not going to take the microphone around. So, yeah. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah, so pray for Carol Warden. Uh, she fell a, a couple times, hurt her hip and her shoulder, and they can't find anything uh, wrong with it. You know, the x-rays might need to be revisited. So wisdom for the doctors there. Yeah, Kathy? So thankful for the Family Life Network and the programs they put on in our area and for Becky's recovery and for the new baby. And Bob? Oh, wow. Great. <laughs> yeah, but thankful for roofs. Thankful that we're dry, we're warm. Yeah, yeah Marilyn? Yeah. 
Can you pray for the owners of the horses at Tioga Downs that uh, were lost in the fire? Uh, it's a horrible thing. Horses are such beautiful creatures you know, and have been so useful to us you know, for millennia you know, that it's just so sad uh, when tragedies like that happen. Uh, just a minute, Noel. I've got to do Dave. The, uh, uh, it, yesterday was Veterans Day, where we remember all those who have served in the military. So remember, Memorial Day is those who ha were served in the military and, and died while serving, where Veterans Day is for everyone who has served, and they can still be alive. Okay, so. For those veterans, we are thankful uh, for their service. We're thankful for those that are in the, the military uh, around the world, uh, protecting our freedoms, um, putting themselves in harm's way uh, for us. We do th are thankful for the police, the fire, the EMT, um, hospital workers, those in rehab, the aides, um, and the nursing homes. Um, all of those that are in service to us. And we do pray for our government. We ask, Lord, that you would give wisdom to our leaders, uh, both at the local level, the national le level, and around the world. So, no? Kathy? Sometimes we don't even know 
what we need to pray for, but the Holy Spirit does it for us. Um, something we can be grateful for. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we we thank you for allowing us to be here in your presence this morning. We thank you that your Holy Spirit is here empowering us. We ask, Lord, that the Holy Spirit would just be with us as we go through the rest of this service. Open our ears and our hearts and our minds. Show us the things that you want us to know today, Lord. We do ask, Lord, that you would be with all those who aren't here this morning, whether they're traveling, whether there's illness or suspicion of illness, whether it's special events like blacksmithing, Lord. We just ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would be on each and every one of them as well right now, empowering them, strengthening them, bringing peace to them, healing them where healing is needed. We ask, Lord, that you would be with our leaders, give them wisdom, give them courage, to do what is right, to seek justice and mercy. We ask, Lord, that you would provide safety to those who are in service to us. We thank you for the gift of their service. And Lord, we ask that you would grow this church. We ask, Lord, that you would fill these seats with people who love you, who love your word, and to do the works that you have called us to do. We ask, Lord, that you would strengthen each and every one of us to do those works, that we would leave this place knowing your love and sharing your love. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are very thankful for the obedient giving of this church. We do, uh, we'll uh, bring the offering forward. We'll bless it uh, through prayer. The offering is available either in the basket in the back, it can be mailed to our P.O. box, or um, can be done online now uh, through our website or through our app. Um, so whatever is most convenient for us, or for you, sorry, uh, just um, you have lots of options now. And we just, again, thank you for your obedience. It is an act of worship. So as the worship team comes forward, uh, let me pray. Dear Lord, we do thank you for your bounty. We thank you for all of the blessings you have given us, our family, our friends, our church, our incomes. We ask, Lord, that you take this little bit that we give back and you would bless it and multiply it that it would be used in your service here in Big Flats and around the world. We ask, Lord, that you would 
not only use the money, but use us. Make us your hands and feet in this place. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen.
defeated. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as your word is proclaimed, we ask the Holy Spirit would fall afresh on each one of us. Make your words alive to us. Let them spark a fire and let us be changed through your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Noel? Scripture this morning is a psalm, and uh, psalm means song, and um, so and it's also prayer, so I'm going to ask you to uh, pray with me. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me that I will teach transgressors your ways so that sinners will turn back to you. Deal with me from guilt of blood shed, O God, you who are God, my Savior, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart you, God, will not despise. Amen. Mr. No. <laughs> Our second scripture reading is from Ephesians 3. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles, surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. That is the mystery made known to me by revelation, as I have already written briefly. In reading this, then, you'll be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to people in other generations, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit of God's holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in the promise in Christ Jesus. I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power. Although I am less than the least of all of the Lord's people, this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ, and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God, who created all things. His intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in heavenly realms, according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him, and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you, therefore, not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. For this reason, 
I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. So we're going to spend some time talking about prayer. In particular, how we can pray for the church, the people in the church, and the people we reach out to. But first, we're going to break down some of this chapter. It's a short chapter, but there's a, a lot in here. Paul starts off by calling himself a prisoner of Christ Jesus for the sake of the Gentiles. Paul was in prison in Rome when he wrote this letter. He was waiting to be put on trial before Nero with charges coming from the Jewish officials. If you know anything about Roman history, Nero was not a friend to the Christians. This was not likely something that Paul was going to survive, and he knew it. But he takes the time to reach out to the churches. He shares with them the lessons he has learned since his encounter on the Damascus Road. He points out that it was his calling to preach the good news of God's love and saving grace to the Gentiles. He talks of how God revealed himself and his plans for the Gentiles to Paul. The revelation that Jews and Gentiles are both heirs and share in the promise in Christ Jesus. He talks a little bit about his conversion and his humble service to the Lord. He tells that through faith in Jesus, we can approach God with freedom and with confidence. That is the good news. Through Jesus, we have access to God as our Father. We know that he hears us when we pray. We know that he delights in our prayers. I'm reminded of the words of Zephaniah. The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. God rejoices over us with singing. Can you imagine God singing? We hear about the angels singing like in the Christmas story. But what about God himself? That's got to be the most awesome thing that you could ever hear. But he sings over you. He loves us. He wants us to have a relationship with him. And I just love that thought that God sings over me. But that brings us into the second half of the chapter. The second half of the chapter almost feels like a benediction, like the end of the book, but it's not. It's just the end of the chapter. But it talks about prayer, of the prayer of Paul for the church. It's his prayer for all the churches. Because remember, this was a chain letter. It went from church to church to church, 
in the um, area of Asia Minor. But from this, we can learn a little something about prayer. The first thing Paul says is that he kneels. Now, I don't often kneel. It's hard on my knees, and it's getting harder to get up. But kneeling isn't about the physical act. Noel read um, out of the psalm that God doesn't want the sacrifices. He looks at what's in our heart. He cares about our attitude when we come to prayer. And that's what Paul is getting at. He kneels because it's an act of humility. It's an act of surrender. He wants us to give up ourselves to him, our will to his will, and acknowledge that he is in control, not us. We come to him with nothing, and he has everything. We can't demand anything. We can only ask. We can cry out with all that is in us. But we have to always remember that he is God, not us. Second, Paul says he prays to the Father. And that section, actually, the Greek indicates more of the Father of fathers, the good and perfect Father that we can come to him with a promise that we are his children. This gives Paul and us the assurance that God hears us and cares about what we're praying for because what father doesn't care about what their children are crying out for? And what is it that Paul cries out for for the churches? He prays that they will be strengthened with power by the Holy Spirit in their innermost being. He prays that Jesus would dwell in our hearts through faith. He acknowledges that our root, our foundation, is love. And because of this, he prays that we would be given the ability to grasp how deep that love is that Jesus has for each of us. He prays that we will be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. That is some prayer. And it is a good example of how we can pray for the church and for each other. Every person here, every person online, every person we come in contact with needs strength. We need strength that can only come from the Holy Spirit. Nowhere in the Bible does it say, God will not give us more than we can bear. It seems to be quite the opposite. He gives us so much that we need to rely on him alone for our strength. He empowers us through the Holy Spirit. Only through him can we, or those around us, make it through the storms of life. We cannot make it through even one day on our own. We need God and we need the Holy Spirit to give us strength. We need more faith. It said if we had a mustard seed of faith, we could move mountains. Mustard seed is itty, itty, bitty, little tiny thing. Sometimes I don't think I have even that much. I need more faith. But Paul prayed that Jesus would dwell in our hearts through faith. We need that prayer. We need it for each other. We need it for ourselves. It's the faith in Jesus that keeps us going. The next part, though, is the real kicker. Paul prayed 
for us to know and understand God's love for us. How can we even come close? In the Greek, there's, what, four different words for love? And Paul uses the agape love here, that all-encompassing, all-powerful, unconditional love of God. We are rooted and established in that love. It's a love so deep and so pure and so overwhelming, you cannot be unchanged from catching just a glimpse of it. A love so strong that God himself came to earth. He was born as a baby to poor parents when there was no room for them in the inn. He was born with the animals in the stable. He suffered hunger and thirst and pain. He was tempted. The people he came to save cursed him, and it broke his heart. But his love endured for us. He loved us so much he was willing to die the most painful, cruel death ever imagined by man so that we could be his children, that we could live with him forever in paradise. That doesn't even scratch the surface of the love that he has for us. If we could just grasp even a little bit of that, how could we ever be the same? And then Paul finishes the chapter with a reminder that it's not our power, it's not in our power to accomplish this. It is God who answers prayer. He also reminds us that our prayers tend to be a little small. We need to pray big. We serve a big God who can do big things. God doesn't do big things to give us any glory. He does it because all the glory is due to him. He does things with the weak so that it's absolutely clear that it's God himself who did it. He does things with the small makes big things happen so that this world will know that it's God and God alone who's at work. Let's pray big prayers. Let's pray big prayers for Big Flat, for the Twin Tears. Let them see that we serve a big God. It's a God that's powerful, a God that's mighty, but a God who is love. Let's give God the glory due his name forever and ever. Amen. All right. Worship team. Let's stand.
He's coming on the clouds, King of kingdoms will bow down. Every chain will break, as the broken hearts declare his praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow.
just stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every will bow I'd like to challenge you this week that when you pray, pray for each of us in the church. Pray that we're given strength by the Holy Spirit. Pray that our faith would increase. Pray that we would get that glimpse that understanding of just how deep and wide the love of God is for us. And let us pray big for this church and for those around us. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Have a good week.